And welcome, everyone. I believe it is time for us to do some talking because it is time for Otaku, where we talk about anime that we have watched, particularly this one down here, Blood of the Last Vampire, uh, anime that came out a little while ago. It is October, <coughs> so we're talking Halloween stuff. Um, yep. Talking scary stuff. Yeah. And this is, unlike a lot of other anime, um, which might be scary, might be horrific, uh, this one is notable for the fact that it is actually set around Halloween. There is a band of trick-or-treaters in this anime, uh, this work of anime. Um, this is a uh, anime film from the year 2000 by Production IG. Um, it is uh, set in 1966. Um, and, uh, based, I believe, or, um, um, there was, th there is a, um, connection with, uh, Mamoru Oshii, which I'm still mm -hmm. unclear on, because he wrote the, like, novel version of this, which came out about the right time, the same time. Um, and, um, basically, so according to Wikipedia, uh, the, the president of production IG approached Oshi with the because he wanted to make a new anime work. The IG president did, um, and asked him to sub submit something. And um, he was doing Oshi was doing a, a class about how to make your own projects, and he got a submission from two individuals, Junichi Fujisaki and a young man named Kenji Kamiyama, who would. Uh, who got his start in the anim in the animation industry in 1987, drawing backgrounds for Ducktales, uh, <laughs> and then went on to work do, is uh, work exactly. <laughs> got to work somewhere. Uh, then went on to do backgrounds for Pat Labor, and then art directed a bunch of stuff, and then uh, uh, directed a little series called Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. Um, so went on to do do very well oh, in uh, oh that little one that little one yes <laughs> that, that, that um, unknown thing yeah. yeah. Um, then directed Eden of the East and, and a bunch of other stuff. So, uh, yeah, um, we're on to being a pretty a pretty guiding light in the industry. Um, and, uh, yeah, so Blood of the Last Vampire ends up becoming kind of the first of a sort of a series of, of works, uh, manga, novel, and a live-action movie version uh, mm -hmm. uh, sometime later, uh, which we will probably not speak today. Um, this <laughs> is the <laughs> anime. It's only, what, like 45 minutes or so. It was short. It was short. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, let's start because this is because Oshi is sort of tangentially related, um, somewhat related. Um, let's start with kind of the overall visual style of this because Blood of the Last Vampire is definitely visually distinctive. It has sort of that Ghost in the Shell original movie vibe of being uh, uh, kind of dark, um, kind of undersaturated uh, in, in a lot of uh, instances and just very. Um, um, very distinctive. How did it sort of grab you visually overall? Um, <clears throat> when I when I watched it again, um, I was reminded about how much of a hand Oshi actually had in this movie. You can definitely see his influence in yeah. it. And um, what I thought was interesting was the the combo work of the of the cell animation and and CGI. Mm. When I first watched it years ago, of uh, you know. Um, well, I was drinking a little bit, and uh, so I didn't quite, you know, get that at 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 the at, mm -hmm. at the time. But um, it does grab you. I mean, that whole mm -hmm. subway scene where really nothing happens; it's just mm -hmm. moving on the subway and lighting. And then it just explodes, and you're just like, "What? Yeah, what what, what, what happened here?" But it's just uh, you're right. It's dark. It is it is dark almost throughout the whole thing. Uh, it is even even the day scenes, the few day, <laughs> the one day scene that you have in there, yeah. and the rest of it is, is just um, visually it's just very interesting, mm -hmm. and, I, and and I enjoyed it uh, very much. Now that I would, wasn't drinking, <laughs> watching this movie, so I you know got a little bit more, mm -hmm. um, but. Um, but no, seriously, it, it's it's visually it's, it's, it's very good. But like I said, you can definitely see Oshi's handprint on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a very visually distinctive style. 
Yeah. Um, as I had, I had made the comment uh, before we we started streaming about the collagen filled uh, <laughs> lips of the main character. Um, <clears throat> that that's and her, I guess, would be her handler, the mm. tall sort mm. of Frankenstein guy with the <laughs> David, weird yeah. weird set eyes and mm. like just the shape of his face is really weird. Mm. And that you know all the all the facial types are distinct in this. There is mm. not much that I recalled seeing that was just sort of generic background. Every yeah. character had a distinct look to them yeah. that mm -hmm. was very easily identifiable. Yes, there he was in the subway, where it's a really weird looking face on him. <laughs> um, it's and, and that sort of struck me going through this as well. It's like there is yeah. daylight in this show, mm. but it is even at the best of daylight it's still a foreboding daylight where it's like it's right. just it's heavy with the idea that something bad bad's gonna happen and then the yeah, rest of the show the... is just all really dark <laughs> like oh yeah literally like as it's growing darker and darker yeah. during you know that the one the, the one daylight scene you're just like uh, as soon as that sun goes down all, yeah, all, all these bad's going on like, yeah all of gonna have you know there will be blood. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, and it's like if you didn't know from the title that something bad was gonna happen, <laughs> and then you were expecting that, it's like it. Mm -hmm. It if you went into this with no title at all, you easily could identify. You know the, how the, it's going to yeah. ramp up. The darker yeah. it gets, the more it's gonna ramp up what's happening. It's well, like, oh. and it's it, it's very <laughs> kind of the, the overall pace of it because it does start you know very very mundane with the subway. And then you have the the famous subway attack, which I don't think I can show much of here, um, but where she you know attacks someone, um, and uh, it ends up rather bloodily, as you might imagine. Um, but even even in that, yeah, it's done in a really like very nicely done. You're not just mm -hmm. gratuitous gore, right? It's right. just lights are going off and on, clickety clack. Mm -hmm. You know, the train's moving along. Then like, there's this frenetic blam mm -hmm. moment of just hell breaks loose and you don't even really see a lot of it no it's just you know it's the lights are off and yep. crap goes on and then all of a sudden the lights back on again you're like mm -hmm. huh <laughs> yep yeah and i was and actually for a moment i was really confused i'm like hey because yeah. you know she's done right with the attack you mm -hmm. don't actually see the attack then the most that yeah. you see is her yeah raising the blade and that's mm -hmm. it as she's charging and and then you just see the one moment of the guy up against the glass, like, ah, help me. Mm -hmm. And, but then the body go like yeah. for like a minute, you're like going, wait a minute, yeah. there should be a body and blood mm -hmm. all over the place. Mm -hmm. What? It... Mm -hmm. So yeah. And you don't really see that much of it until about a couple yeah. minutes later. But... but again, you know what I mean? It's one of those things where yeah. like, you look at the title and it's like, mm -hmm. okay, that maybe there's no body because like whatever she did, it evaporated or, mm -hmm. or somehow it like just I, disappeared yeah. because she's got like some magical weapon or something. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I think that's what happened. And, right. and, and I think it's great foreboding is okay. You have this, you know, this very mundane thing. You have oh. your, your moment of action and you're like, okay, like there, there is, there's clearly action. There's clearly horror going on here. Um, and then we kind of move into the rest of the story. So we have that anticipation building in. Yeah. Um, and then you get the, um, um, the the base that she's on and this has got to be kind of interesting because it is set in 1966 i believe um yes. you know, the, the 60s definitely in uh in japan so yeah that kind of weird nostalgia well i say weird but that kind of that that looking back on on the way things used to be um she's in this you know yeah. the, the the wooden high school um uh, which is now you know the, the ghost well, it was kind of school. funky because i think before they showed the 1966 October Halloween mm. dance, mm -hmm. before they showed that, they showed the tarmac. Yeah. And they mm -hmm. showed F-105 Thunder Chiefs mm -hmm. rolling along. I, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, um, I don't really identify anything else in this that's specifically set in that, mm -hmm. except for that aircraft. And I'm yeah. like, that's a, yeah, okay, that's a 1960s <laughs> aircraft. What is this? When does... And yeah. then there you see the poster and it's like, Oh, I thought it was contemporary. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, no, it's not. Well, one of the things I liked about that, that I found interesting about that when they're panning through the you know the base and everything, it's 1966. Mm -hmm. But it's just for once you get an unusual, a lot of the unusual things about this about mm -hmm. this movie. One of the, one of the big unusual things is that you actually see 
American dependence and mm, soldiers mm. on the base and, and and interaction between the two cultures. Mm -hmm. that, that even though it's very brief, that what you see, it's really interesting, and it shows almost like a lot of what life was like mm -hmm. on a military base, yeah. Japan. That's American. Mm -hmm. And when Seiya shows up and she's just like, and like everyone just looks at her funny because there really aren't any other Japanese students there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you know, she's the odd one out. Yeah, she's dressed like a Japanese student, which mm -hmm. the school yeah. nurse looks at her and is like, are you Japanese? <laughs> it's like everybody, everybody else is just dressed sort of, mm -hmm. you know, kind of American 1960s kid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and it's, I think, one of the reasons why the movie jumps out at you is because it is playing around with the these very distinctive things about the culture of the time, where you have this military base in Japan where you have no Japanese people, basically, you know, yeah. um, and where a Japanese person is foreign, um, yeah. uh, despite uh, all that stuff, uh, which is just, just fascinating to me, I think. Um, yeah, and, and I think it, it, and again, it kind of builds into these themes of, okay, you have this horror movie, uh, and then you're, you're setting up the fact this is, this is sort of a liminal space, right? It is a very different space in and of itself, um, which then <laughs> moves into the very different creatures um, <laughs> involved in the movie. Um, and I think it, it does do a good job of kind of lulling you into this sense of, okay, we had our, our weird moment. Uh, and we know bad things are going to happen, but it's this, you know, classic um, uh, high school environment. Um, and then we get the girls in the bed um, and the, the that hospital scene. Um, yeah. When uh, things things change. Yes. Dramatically. Well, and it's very interesting that this, the, the time available to mm -hmm. do this movie. Mm-hmm made for a very microcosm of where its presentation was. You mm -hmm. see the subway to start, mm -hmm. and then that's really kind of it. Mm -hmm. You know, everything then gravitates onto that base, mm -hmm. and everything is all happening in there, in and amongst the people on that base. Yep. And it's like, okay, so you don't have, you know, these grand sweeping, we're going to have to, you know, we've, <laughs> we've killed this thing in Tokyo, but now there's a big one that's in Kyoto, we're going to have to go there, we're going to have to go over here. It's like, no, you know there's things going on, and it sort of circles in around this very limited space where there's nowhere you are, you can't go anywhere outside the fencing. Mm -hmm. and it's like, eh, yeah. interesting, okay. Mm -hmm. And, and the other part of, of this, of the characterization, is I was so glad that it's not... I had watched, um, was it Blood Plus, the, mm. the, the odd episode mm. anime? I actually watched that. Mm. Um, yep. and, it's, it, and it really is completely different. And, mm. um, <laughs> but, yeah. But, but to, to make the difference between that and, and this movie, is that in the movie, say a acts her age there's no mm. tee -hee moment in here yeah. there's no moe there's no there's none of that mm -hmm. it is not you know she doesn't want to talk to people and it's very interesting mm -hmm. the first person who talks to her who she winds up to be mm -hmm. and you know and and that person actually calls her weird but anyway yeah. um um but yeah it, it it's it was just you know and, and you're right there was really when, even when you left the base, you still came back to it. Like mm -hmm. the when she when they walk by the pawn shop, when he says, mm -hmm. "I can't get you a new blade mm -hmm. right away," and she looks at the pawn shop as like, "Okay, if I need to go here, this is where I'm going to go." Mm -hmm. And then you cut away to the the bars, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that service base. But even then, you get the sense that you're really not that far from the base yeah. at all. You're, mm -hmm. I think, the pawn it shop's across the street. street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and. And and the and the bars are really nearby because, you know, when the one at the bar goes, okay, I'm to set everything aflame, mm -hmm. literally gets to the base really very quickly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, um, yeah and it, it's one of the reasons why I think this, this works so well. It's, it is this little microcosm, you know, it's like setting up your, your horror movie on a spaceship. 
you can't get it get yeah. it out you know <laughs> there's nowhere else <laughs> it's a it's a very contained pressure cooker mm -hmm. yeah um plus the fact that you have all these innocent people you know all around yeah. um uh and also the fact that i think it, again kind of smart it's, it's a military base you have all these explosives you have gasoline all of this chance for pandemonium and chaos um which uh which kind of you know, makes a lot of sense um, yeah, and then um, the what I also find interesting is the the balance and sort of comparison between normality and the supernatural in this, where yes. mm -hmm. it is very just kind of mundane, 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 and then a horrible creature shows up versus you know fountains of blood, um, and it is horrific in a way that a lot of horror often doesn't get because it's you know jump scares or whatever. Right. Um, and because you have that strong um, contrast, and I think also because the uh, the creatures in this are very, you know, they're not simply a guy in a mask, you know, um, right. they are very distinctively horrific, and I right. think that that adds to it a lot, you know, something that animation can do. And the best creep factor for me in in this in this movie was when the two girls mm. were in the nurse's office. And the nurse is like put getting together the medicine for for mm -hmm. the the girls supposed to be anemic, and all just their lips are moving, they're talking yeah. to each other, and, and, you, no and, sound. Sound. and there's no sound. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. and and that's when you just kind of go, you're watching, it, you're like, going, oh, yeah, uh, this ain't well, good. I don't, I don't like this. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't like this very much. Mm -hmm. Well, I like the nursing staffs. Uh, you know, the, that lady is such a consummate professional. That her diagnosis without any kind of real examination is the fact the girl's anemic. Mm -hmm. She's a bloody yeah. vampire. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? It's like she has no blood in her. How about this? You know, <laughs> unless it's your blood. Yeah. I don't know. And she's also, I think, a um, a very effective character. See, in most horror movies, you need sort of the the audience. Um, identification character, right? The normal person yeah. who's seeing this through their eyes. Yeah. Right. And you, know, you have a nurse who is a professional, right? Like she, she's dealing with uh, difficult things all the time. And having somebody like that react with such horror to these things, um, I think really helps to sell the um, um, those elements of it. Uh, and then yes. having her dragged yeah. throughout the entire story, it's like, ah, you know. Worst day well, ever. I felt bad for her. I felt bad for her because she was just like going. She has a, well, she had nowhere else to go. Honestly, yeah. she's on the base. She's down on the base, but mm -hmm. literally every corner she turns, monster, someone being eaten. Yeah. This girl's saying is just chopping things left and right, and explosions, and a. Uh, oh, the lady, the lady uh, has a terrible sense of direction. Yeah, she she just always ends up in trouble. <laughs> I like the way that they. Um, gave her the every person moment in the mm. uh in the garage with the jeeps yeah where yeah. she's given the gun mm -hmm. and she sits down and has that moment where it's like i'm so far out of my element yeah this is so far beyond you know here's this japanese high school girl and she's mm -hmm. fighting these whatever these giant monsters are it's probably better for me to just i'm gonna get killed anyway so i might mm -hmm. as well just put the gun to my head and do it yeah, it's like wow, that's an every person moment. Like facing your own mortality, it's like you can either yeah. go the quick way or you can go the horrible way. Yeah, what are you gonna choose? What what's your choice gonna be in that situation? Mm -hmm. Go to the temple or claws and teeth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> after yeah. certainly after she watched the you know, the nice guard guy, I was like, hey, where are you going, man? <laughs> like, oh, the, yeah. way they, in the way that they that they killed that guy off. I mean, yeah. I, you know, thing a little bit before. You didn't just grab him. No, from the tree. Like no. Reached down and grabbed under the the guard is fat, mm -hmm. and he reaches yeah. under the fat and pulls up by the fat mm -hmm. and starts chopping yeah. on the guy. No yeah, one wants to die idea. that way. <laughs> no. no one does. Mm -hmm. That's what Which I think is why guy. you know that's why she has that very every man I, moment there, where it's just like. Yeah. You know, not everybody's the hero in the you know the film, and just running in there and be like, "No, I I know I'm powerless, but with the power of friendship, you know, <laughs> we can win." Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? Where most people beast, would but... be faced with that kind of you know, I'm going to die, so I might as well do it why I, how I want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
and again, I think it's, it's an effective use of horror where you don't make everybody Rambo. You know, yeah. you, you mm-hmm. give that sense of humanity of, you know, if you're in this situation, you may not react exactly that way, but you, you'd have the, those, uh, you know, um, you, your, your, your knees would definitely knock at various yeah. points in this. Um, I mean, yeah, she did. She didn't end up as a gibbering pile of goo. So you know what I mean. Yeah, she had the wherewithal to put the gun to her head. So. Exactly. Um, and I think it's also interesting uh, again, getting back to pacing, how you have like that 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 burst of violence in the beginning, and then you get these, you know, bits of violence through, and again, only forty five minutes, and then you get to the warehouse scene. Yeah. It is this long sequence mm-hmm. of this fight. Oh. Um, going back and forth and trying to contain it and all this kind of stuff. And it kind of turns it into an action movie um, for a little while. And it really changes up the pace in, I think, a really effective way of saying, oh, this isn't just going to be things that go bump in the night and then, you know, sword slash. Um, there, it, there are ways of kind of dealing with this. And the, but then also you have the fact that that whole sequence is very chaotic and destructive. Yeah. You know, if you if you tr- you know, you can't really do um, a sustained fight for th- with these things because they will you know just kind of destroy everything in the process. Wear you down. Yeah, they just wear you down. Yeah. Well, that's you know, I, I when I realized how long the fight scene was going on for, I was just like, yeah, this is a lot. This is what Dragon Ball should have done. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's still going on for like nine episodes to power up for the for the spirit bomb. Why don't we just do this in like five minutes, please? Yeah. But no, it, it it but no, it was and the thing of it is is that it was constant motion. It was mm-hmm. either something in the frame is constantly moving or the frame itself was actually mm-hmm. constantly yeah. moving. It was no you know, it was very frenetic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, I do, I do love that, that moment when she takes a slash with the sword and it bends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh wow! <laughs> yep. That yeah. Like, because, they're going to because, 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 and be like, oh damn. <laughs> well, the best part about that scene is that she they really set it up as a killing strike, mm. and she's really going into it, Ooh, and then yeah. it just. Bends on its back or front or whatever she hit it on, and it's just, and it's just like she's it all crumpled. Mm-hmm. And I actually just went like, oh no, yeah, because you know, you're just like mm-hmm. you're expecting the thing to be cleaved, yeah. And it's just mm-hmm. basically turns around, and goes, oh, I get to eat you now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and no backup because you know, as, mm-hmm. as right, yeah, the bullets aren't doing anything to the things, mm-hmm. so it's like, well, you know, now you got your bent, crumpled piece of tin foil, <laughs> like you got nothing. Yeah, <laughs> she's she's definitely strong and in better mm-hmm. condition than the nurse to yeah. to fight these things off but hand to hand no no that's that's not a winning fight mm-hmm. no um and again it's one of those things where okay where do you go from here um you know you've had this explosive fight in the warehouse um and i think it's really interesting that it ends with this or it, it, it climaxes with this chase of a jet um, this plane trying to take off and going after it. It is one of those things where, on the one hand, it's absurd. On the other hand, it is this big climactic, you know, showdown sort of a moment. Um, and Which I didn't understand. The C-130 is is not, it's not a fast aircraft. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a mm-hmm. giant no, it's ass lumbering cargo aircraft. Mm-hmm. Why in the hell is this thing that can fly? Not just fly off into the city. All it has to do is just like go treetop level and just kind of mm-hmm. sail across the fence mm-hmm. and then disappear in the seedy underground of the <laughs> local area. And then they would be back to hunting them again. It's mm-hmm. like instead it tries to catch a ride on a transport plane. Like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I see you're wrapping the story up. Hey, we've only got a few minutes, guys. Let's mm-hmm. get this thing done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the, they were supposed to be hibernating. And mm. that, you know that's something in, in actually in the an, in anime series mm. that is a thing that they talk about is that they do hibernate but they try to hide. Now in the anime, which is not really connected, it's a totally separate universe, totally separate thing. Yeah. But in the anime um, uh, series, a lot of it does take place in Vietnam, ah. and, but it doesn't here. So it mm. it I think the idea was that the the start the C one thirty 
was gonna was headed off to Japan because oh. at the end of the, the movie they say everything's moving to Japan, mm-hmm. and um, the so it was gonna hitch a ride and do exactly that hide, mm-hmm. but okay. do it in a totally different country. Gotcha. And oh, 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 you know, from the jungle in a way like that. But the one thing that you know, as I was watching the chase scene, which is pretty intense. Mm. I was like thinking to myself, like, like, what if I was driving that Jeep and going that fast, going up at, behind a plane, going that fast, and having to hold the <laughs> steering wheel? Because all you have to do is take it just a like that, mm-hmm. and you're going to flip that Jeep. I mean, that's just physics, yeah. you, you yeah. know. Mm-hmm. And it's not like you can just put on the brakes and <laughs> stop, because then you're going to flip the mm-hmm. damn thing forward. Yeah. So, I, you know, so you, it, for me, just watching it was just really tense and the way that she wraps herself to the to the uh, high bar mm-hmm. of the Jeep, mm-hmm. and she's and then she does the one strike, and that's the other brilliant part about this that I really liked was that it wasn't a big back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, yeah. back and forth. Mm-hmm. It was just the one strike. She knew she had the one. You you understood that there was only one hit yep. on this mm-hmm. on this one. Yeah, just one chance and one hit to, to get it right, and that's you know what she did. It was just the one strike, and mm-hmm. it, it was done. Yep, and and um, what I <laughs> and so when they finally slowed it down, they turn around and they actually go back to the thing that's like just mm. like dying on the tarmac. He gave it its blood, and I was just mm. like, okay, you can kind of understand that you feel sorry for it or whatever. My thought would have been just like going, okay, you're dying here. Just let me just, mm-hmm. you know, just end it for you. Yeah, but. Well, I was waiting I for that that blood dripping to be like the next, the sort of <clears throat> indicator of now comes the interrogation. Like I she mean. drips her blood and binds it to her. Mm-hmm. It follows her commands, or and now she starts yeah, asking right. questions like, "Who do you, you know, who do you know? Who else is a vampire? Where are you guys right. based? Where are you? Where were you trying to go on that plane?" And that's the thing; and it never goes there. And I, <laughs> I, I, I think this is a very this is it's a, a great example of how this is a different kind of horror movie. It's more about its themes. It's more about the symbolism than it is about mm-hmm. you know the lore, if you will, of creating. Right. Okay, and then it's going to be the thing. Um, it's more about you know I am that basically. You know I am one of those things, um, not precisely, but I am a monster in my own way, and so I kind of have an affinity for it. Like I kind of I kind of get it that you are on the outside of society and you cannot you cannot coexist. Um, yeah. And it creates this interesting you know, parallels between uh, Saya and the creatures that she hunts. And it's one of the reasons I, I like the fact that, um, you know, you don't get a scene where, you know, the two FBI agents come in and say, well, as you know, Saya, you know, 500 years ago, um, you know, <laughs> the, the point <laughs> right. is... Let's explain um, to you everything you already know. Exactly. Just so you know <laughs> that you know. Yeah. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, you know, this is just... What's going on? What is Saya's backstory? What is all that kind of? Nope, we 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 don't know. If you watch a live action movie, you you might learn some of that stuff. Better gonna, for worse. We, we, what, exactly. Right. Um, but you know, and and I uh, uh, whole other topic. Anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> I I, th- I think I really like the fact that this is one of those things where again, you you need your ambiguity tolerance. You need to be able to say okay. This is just a little chapter in this person's life, and I'm just seeing this little, you know, moment, this little mission, and that's all that this is. Um, but it packs an awful lot into it. It's 45 minutes. Gosh. Well, it's it's great that how they deal with that with the nurse as mm. the end of it, where she just you know she tells her story. This is the only problem I had with with the at the actual production of mm. the voice actor of mm. actress who did the voice. Mm. It was at the end. I know that she was trying to go for a tired kind of downtrodden mm. voice, but it just sounded really robotic mm-hmm. uh, to me yeah. for some reason. But anyway, but the, but the point is, is that she was basically telling you as the viewer going okay after all this happens i've been connected with this person through this traumatic experience and i know absolutely diddly squat about what the heck is going on here Mm -hmm. here's all i know is that this person showed up this crazy stuff happened these really horrifying bees i got to watch people die messily and badly Mm. and and at the end of it everything just 
goes away and I'm not getting it and I don't mm-hmm. understand it, but it's gone. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they go, oh, you saw the person, this girl who helped you, did she look like this? And the only real clue you get about Saya is that photograph and the date on the photograph. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's it. That's all you get. That's all you're going to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think we see that. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That, that's yeah. all we get. Um, and I like that. And conveniently labeled uh, as well next to the date. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, so now what we suspect yeah. is exactly. what we thought. Yeah. Like, and, uh, and again, it's one of those things where I think you could have made it, and I think you could have said nothing, in which case it, it might have felt a little frustrating. But I think when your title of your movie is Blood the Last Vampire, giving the audience that little bit of, of verification is that little, ah, you know, after all of these things. Okay, yeah, I, I get it. We've connected all the dots, you know, or we've connected those dots, I should say. Right. Um, uh, and I think it's just a, a wise move on an audience part. Where, again, we didn't really need that per se, but it just helps give it a little bit of satisfaction. Well, I'll say, again, labeling it with the word, mm-hmm. all you had to do was put the date. Yeah, true. Yeah. And I mean, if you just the picture and the date alone mm-hmm. would have been like true that sa- the same thing as putting the word next to it. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you would look at it and be like, wait a minute, she can't be a high school girl. Like, for what? No, she be like, <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. Oh, I get it. Yeah, it's just, you know. So, uh, yeah, I totally agree. That's like a little way to give you some some extra to it. But then they also kind of like <laughs> kind of poked you right in the eye, and be like, and just in case you didn't realize it. Although the other thing is, this is all in English, so they're 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 you know relying on their Japanese audience to be able to read that English word vampire. Um, yeah. So hope so maybe maybe that was a little bit of an extra you know push um, for folks who know that. Um, although also, well, I don't know. I mean, the title card does say, um, like literally, "Blood the Last Vampire," but I'm not sure if that wasn't digitally added. That that might be in my English version. I'm not sure if that's on the oh. original Japanese version. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that that is that is interesting. Um, yeah, it's 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 an interesting film. Um, there's a lot going on. Um, the, and for the added creep factor at the end, of in case you weren't creeped out enough and you actually stayed and watched the actual credits mm-hmm. with the music and the Vietnam. Rainy, blurry, in the blurry in charge, yeah. and graves and things mm-hmm. like that going on behind it, and you're yeah. just like, it, 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 again, you're just kind of like going, uh, I don't really like that. <laughs> uh, just, you know, mm-hmm. going to, is there something behind me? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, funny. I don't remember Vietnam being about vampires. <laughs> well, now we know. <laughs> Maybe I was wrong. There we are. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I think it's interesting. I mean, um, I just keep coming back to the fact that I remember watching this, you know, some some years ago, having heard about it and being like, okay, I'm going to check this out. It's only 45 minutes? Like, all right, how much are they going to give me? And they give you a lot. Like, this this packs a full horror experience yeah. um, uh, into that. And, but, but it also gives you more... I, I love when something sort of inspires fan fiction when you're done and you're like, I want to go back and, and, you know, think about more things that might have happened in that universe, right? I, I want to kind of explore that world yeah. more. And this very much does that while still feeling like a, a satisfying little mini mission. Um, well, it's nice that you get the action that you need mm-hmm. to support and drive 45 minutes worth yep. of content. Mm-hmm. Whereas yeah. if you had a two-hour film, you probably would have about the same amount of action and a lot of filler. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, to some saving element to this, it's like, oh, just cut out the treacle and let's go for the heart of the matter here. Just get this stuff, like, (laughs) neatly wrapped up in a short period of time. I think you're absolutely right. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. (laughs) And it's the kind of thing I think you can do, again, with an OVA, with the very specific elements of that, with with the specifics of the otaku market, where you can just say, hey, oh, she's involved, you know, Cool stuff happening. Buy our thing, and folks will buy their thing without having yeah. to 
say, okay, well, call up all the film, you know, call up all the movie theaters, see if who's willing to run a 45-minute yeah. thing. Um, well, didn't they release it actually online for free for like the first 24 hours? Oh, did they? I didn't hear that. Yeah, yeah. so to, to boost DVD sales for 24 hours, they, they, they um, allowed it to be downloaded or viewed, not downloaded, viewed. In mm. year 2000? Uh, Wow. Yeah. That's cool. And um and uh then that's what drove its sales, mm. the DVD sales afterwards. Mm. The 12 hours of buffering to get it down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Um hey, oh, well, I hate you. Yeah. Well, this and, and, this 56k modem is blazing fast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it worked. Going to Wikipedia, um um, in its first week in North America, it sold more than 70,000 DVDs and 30,000 VHS tapes. Um, within its first wow. month, it was Mug <clears throat> Entertainment's top-selling title in its history. Um, and it appeared on the Video Business, Billboard, Video Store Magazine, and Entertainment Weekly list of top DVD sales. Um, and, uh, wow. and, and yeah, and then they said it, it was that. Um, and there's also a limited theatrical release. Um, done in America, uh, just in a few theaters here and there, um, just enough to give it um, give it going. Um, <laughs> to give you an idea, um, the entire f- uh, film was released for free on the on the day it was released through a b- streaming broadcast. It was it was broadcast by more than sixty one thousand viewers. <laughs> the ones that had a 64k modem <laughs> yeah because that's the thing wow. you know that was that was the audience back then um no mom you can't use the phone i'm watching the movie with that yeah caller waiting interrupting my download now it's gonna take me 48 hours to get 45 minutes uh, son of a i hate call waiting yeah uh-huh. um but yeah, remarkable film, remarkable work. Um, since we have a little time, I do want to talk. I, I have seen the live action film. It, it's, mm, um, and I want to mention it because it's two hours long. Um, Is it a musical? No. Um, oh, <laughs> if you go into it looking for sort of something that expands on the story of like her back, their backstory, and kind of builds more into that. I found it entertaining. Um, the the staff clearly know knew what they were trying to get across, um, and did some kind of interesting, neat stuff with it. Um, that said, it's very long, um, and it feels a little overdone. It, it feels like it's just trying to do too many things at once. Um, it's trying to be very visually um, <coughs> remarkable, um, but it does some cool things. There's a a, a an amazing long um, street fight scene with Saya using like wire work um, with a, a bunch of, of bad guys and this very, you know, chaotic wuxia kind of fight scene. Uh, this is really cool. Um, like crouching tiger, hidden dragon kind of kind of floating around fight scene, um, yeah. but, but not as floaty. More, you know, okay. punching street. You know, as street is trying to punch her, she's kind of jumping out of the way. All that kind of stuff. Um, okay. It works surprisingly well, and it was one of those things where they're like, "How can we take, you know, Hong Kong wire work into the kind of the world of the Last Vampire and make those match up?" I think that, I think it worked. But again, it's it's one of these very lengthy live action movies, and then it gets kind of weird at the end because it's more again more about where she comes from and all that stuff. Um, so again, I I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, don't go in expecting you know the greatest film ever. Um, but it's interesting. So just FYI, if you want kind of that backstory. I, I have no experience with anything else in the, the Blood universe. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure I've ever gone into a film ever in my life and expected it to be the greatest film yeah, ever. Good, because <laughs> apparently everyone else does. I don't know. Um, very odd. I, I will say that uh, when they say that Blood Plus series is a different universe, it really is. Okay. There's That's Moe right. element. There's, wow. there's a... There's a uh, brothers uh two two brothers who are you know related to say yeah that you know just not really um their father happened to work with the network that david founded mm. you know in, in in the you get a reference to david in the series mm. you don't really see him that much yeah okay and and 
that's where they talk a lot more about Vietnam. They talk a lot more about the hibernation and the need to, to find these out there because apparently she herself actually goes to sleep periodically okay. for like uh... 30, 40 years at that time. And then when she wakes up, that's when the organization is almost like um, Alucard in, in Helsing. Mm. This organization has her, created her to be a weapon uh, against these things. Okay. So when she wakes up, they are there for her and they provide support. And she has a, I don't want to say magical sword, but it is a mm. specifically tight made sword. I remember now. She cuts her own blood. Like if she cuts her hand and the okay. blood is on the blade. That's what kills the monsters. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. So, but the problem with the series is actually the problem that you're talking about for have if if, mm. if Blood the Last Vampire was two hours long, mm. it's so it's it's a this much action which is not bad, mm -hmm. but the entire 55, uh, 50 episode series is like this in exposition mm. and Moe and hints of Yuri and you know will her brother and she ever clear their love for each other and mm. things like that and after a while by the time you get to the end of it you're just like just everyone die please <laughs> just, <laughs> everyone get on the boat and the world <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so um what i would definitely say is is don't worry about the series okay um, i i haven't seen blood sea but um yeah i don't think blood sea blood plus related I think is it blood sea? Um, oh no, you, you're right. Well, blood, my blood sea is related. Did my list universe. listed it as as related? Yeah, I was it, like, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it it is. Um, um, it is definitely part of the franchise, but it's it's listed on Wikipedia as just you know kind of inspired by more than mm. yeah, um, related or more than the the sequel or anything. Um, interesting. It, it's, happens, it happens in a different city on the other side of the planet. <laughs> yeah, oh. there we go. Right. Um, <laughs> with totally makes sense now. Because why not? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, because, you know, if something's successful, guess what happens? We get more of that thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, Can you say isekai? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. So that is, uh, that's Blood the Last Vampire. Any other thoughts you guys wanted to bring to the table? Oops. It's worth the watch. Yeah, it's I a mean, good Halloween film. Mm -hmm. Halloween film. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, and that's the other part. Actually, that's a good point, is that you don't have to be an anime fan to watch yeah. this thing. True. If you enjoy Halloween, if you enjoy horror, watch this. It's it's right up your alley. It doesn't look it's like gonna, anime much at all. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say, and it's not so jump scary that it, you know people of weak constitution are gonna be like, "Oh, I can't see it. It's just too, it's too, too frightening." Mm -hmm. It's like, no, it's, it's got a good blend of like, "Oh, wow, that's really screwed up," and mm -hmm. "Wow, that's kind of a lot. There's a lot going on there," but it's not really jump scary, scary. And so. what I appreciate is that right. the the gore is quick, so that when you do have the yeah. fountain of blood and so forth, it, it, it you know you're not holding on something as it's flailing around and things are flying everywhere right, right. something gets killed and it's it, it's out of there pretty quickly so you get the reaction yeah, someone, some, but... yeah someone's not trying to grab their intestines and shove them back <laughs> and screaming it's like yeah not that yeah not a romero film in other words yeah the, wor the, wor the, the worst you get is the the poor american marine who's like yeah. basically folded in half the door jam <laughs> Or yeah, yeah. Oh. But even then, you just it, literally they took the effort to make him turn like away seconds. from yeah. the viewer. Mm. So he's facing the door. So all you see is like, oh my gosh, that's horrible. But there's not you're not looking him in the eyes. You're not mm. you know you don't see any yeah his disemboweled body. I'll never forget the first time <laughs> I watched the movie Halloween. Um, I must have watched some censored version because when she goes into the bedroom. And like lies down, and and then look, and the closet door opens. It's all black. Like you can't see what's in there, and she sees it and screams and runs out of the room, and it's like an empty closet. And I'm like, <laughs> there was a censored version. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah. Nothing else was censored about it. I don't know what was going on. Maybe it was just you know the the, the you know the levels were bad in that that version. I don't know. But it's just like I. Awesome. Uh, um, so at least you, yeah, <laughs> at least you. Uh, 
Um, you know, you're getting all that in your in in your version. But yeah. Where did all those clothes I just bought go? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, great little Halloween uh, flick for you is Blood the Last Vampire. 